Now, I am purposely giving the original statement and diagram as I found this problem to show you that you have to be very careful how you read the problem and look at the diagram. A lot of times we as teachers are not good with you. Students, we assume that you understand things that are difficult to understand when you're just starting out. So here is my restatement of the problem without a diagram, how I dissected that statement and created a correct diagram, and then how I solved the problem. Original statement and diagram is, as shown below, a tank is filled with water to a height of 2.5 meters. A U manometer is connected to this tank at height 0.7 from the bottom, which is 0.2 above equilibrium level. Find the manometer deflection L, and we're given this diagram. Well, the 2.5 meters is okay. This is telling us that it's an open tank. Uh, the connection at 0.7 above the bottom is okay. And then the rest is kind of very confusing. First of all, this is, means it's this open end here. There should be a symbol like this here, showing that it's an open manometer. And this 0 to does not go to here. 0 to is from this height to here. And it's very difficult to see. And this is not the manometer deflection. The manometer deflection is always measured from 0. So this would be 2L. So on to my statement of the problem and a solution. Now the same problem stated more clearly is open YouTube manometer is connected to an open tank at a height h equal to 0 0.7 meters from the bottom and the equilibrium level is d equal to 0 0.2 meters below this connection. The manometer fluid is Merriam blue with sg equal to 1.75. The tank is then filled with water to a depth of h equal to 2.5 meters and we're to find the manometer deflection l. So we start with an, an open tank and a U2 manometer connected H equal to 0 0.7 meters from the bottom. And in that U2 manometer, so we have a U2 connected there, there's Miriam blue fluid and its equilibrium level is 0.2 meters below this connection. So what we have is this situation. Here's the tank, open tank. Here's the connection, 0, 7 from the bottom. Here's the U-tube manometer, and here's the Miriam blue fluid in it, and so the zero level is 0.2 meters below this connection here. What happens? The tank is then filled with water to a depth of H equal to 2.5 meters. So we have this situation. We fill with water. It's still open. The upside down deltas are for open, and this is open, and what happens is that the water presses down the oil and the manometer deflects from the zero position from our distance of L. And we're to find this L here. Okay, so here we have our problem set up and we're to find L. And as always, we'll start by writing down what we have. We have, this is the pressure point P1, P1, is equal to one atmosphere and our end pressure point we'll mark it as two is also equal to one atmosphere that's because we have an open tank and an open U2 manometer and then what else do we have we have SG equals rho oil over rho water and in our case it's 1.75 and we have a bunch of heights here. The important part was that we have two states. We had the state without water, which we got our equilibrium point from, and our, so that's our zero point on our manometer. And then we had the second state where we add water, and again, it's now in equilibrium, and we have the, the, the oil in the manometer has risen to 0.2. So this is a static vertical system. It's static, it's in a state, right? And it's vertical, everything is vertical, so our only force is gravity. We have two fluids, but they're both liquids, they're both incompressible. So while we are talking about each liquid, water and oil, we have a constant rho. And then that means that we have 
p is only a function of z. Let's put our z in here. We always measure z going straight up. And so p is equal to p of z. So we have dp, dz, and not delta p, delta z, is minus rho g. And rho depends only on the liquid we are talking about and not on z. So that sentence about depending on the liquid we're talking about means that we need to look at water and then oil. So we need to look at the water system and then the oil system. So that means that we add a third point here where we've gone from water to oil. So this is our third point here. Working from left to right, we have one, three, two. We first have our water system. So we have our water system which is the integral from P1 to P3 of dP equal to minus rho water times G times Z1 to Z3 dZ. And this would give us, as always, we're going to put our minus sign in here and write these in the opposite order. P1 minus P3 equals rho water times g times z3 minus z1. So now our question is, how much is z3 minus z1? We have to get from the top of the water down to the bottom of the water, right there. So we can see from here to here, to the equilibrium point, that we can use our numbers. What is this distance from here to here? And the answer, of course, is that it's the manometer deflection, L. We were very careful to make sure that our manometer is the same diameter everywhere we use it to measure. That's what a U-tube manometer is. And so this volume that's displaced here is the volume that's created here. And because the diameters are all the same, this length is the same as this length. So what can we say about Z3? minus a z1. We can say that we go down 2.5 meters. That gets us all the way to the bottom of the tank. Then we go up 0 0.7 meters. Then we go down 0 0.2 meters. And then we go down L. And altogether, this is minus 2 minus L. So that's what we're going to substitute here. Let's go on to oil, doing oil again from left to right. So P3 to P2, P3 to P2, DP equals minus rho oil times G times Z3 to Z2. And that means that P3 minus P2 is equal to rho oil times G times Z2 minus Z3. And we need to calculate Z2 minus Z3, but that's an easy one because we measure from here to here. And so we have one L and another L. So this is simply two L. So how can we use our two equations that we've got to solve for L? What haven't we used? We haven't used that P1 and P2 are the same. This is P1 minus P3, and this is P3 minus P2. If we add these two together, the two equations, we will get P1 minus P2, and that will give us zero, since P1 is equal to P2. So we get zero, that's P1 minus P2, equals rho W times G times minus two minus L plus rho oil times G times two L. And so we're gonna move this on that side and the minuses will go away and the G's will cancel. So rho W times two plus L equals rho oil times 2L. And so now we can use rho oil over rho W is 1.75. So we get 
2 plus L equals 1.75 times 2L. And remember to multiply this before doing anything else. So we have 2 plus L equals 3.5L, which gives us 3.5 minus 1, 2 equals 2.5L. So, so L equals 2 over 2.5, which is 0 0.8 meters. And that is our answer.